we were looking at this problem from information transmission. Okay, let me recall the problem. We had uh, n symbols x1 through xn, okay, and uh, each had a frequency associated with it, which was a frequency of occurrence. We wanted to construct a code for this uh, for this uh, set of symbols. So for each symbol, we needed a binary string, right? Um, now, if uh, the code were such that you know, the length of these strings were the same for all of them, then there is really no problem. There is we don't we do not have a problem to solve. But if we allow the uh, coding to be such that these code words can have variable length, okay, then we do have a problem to solve. Uh, Essentially, symbols which, which uh, appear more frequently, we would like to give a shorter code word, right? Uh, I guess one way to uh, see this is, uh, uh, for instance, if you had a large file, okay, and you had uh, n words, which are and these words are repeated. They all have a frequency associated with them, which is nothing but the uh, number of times that the code word appears in a file in that file and you would like to encode this file as a so that you know the code words are prefix free which means no code word is a prefix of another okay this is how we want to encode this file and send it across then um, the size of the file okay once encoded the size of the file is nothing but the frequency times for it's sum over every uh, word, the frequency of occurrence of the word times um, the size of the code word. Okay, and this quantity, which is the size of the file, you would like to minimize. Um, so this is exactly what we had. So let me put that put that file across. So the input. Okay, the input is a set of frequencies. Okay, f1 through fn. Okay. And we would like a prefix free, free code. This is from yesterday. Uh, well, I'll just get to this binary tree in a minute. Essentially, you want a prefix free code and you want to minimize the following hi times fi. hi, okay, here we say it's the height of the symbol i in the binary tree, but you, this is the same as the length of the code word. Okay, hi is the same, is also, is also the length. Of, code, of the code word, okay, for symbol i. So then this thing is nothing but the size of the file. If i is the number of times the word occurs, this is the length of the code word. So this is the, uh, this quantity is nothing but the number of bits used to encode the file and you would like to minimize this, right? Okay, so we also saw that prefix free code, a prefix free code corresponds to a binary tree. Okay, there is a one to one correspondence. So given a binary tree okay, and symbols at each leaf, you can construct a prefix free code. I mean this gives you a prefix free code for these symbols. Essentially when you traverse right, uh, you think of it as uh, a one. If you traverse left on the tree, you think of it as a zero. Okay. You traverse a path from root to this leaf and that gives you a code word. Okay? Each time you went right, you write a 1. Each time you went left, you write a 0. And when you end up with, uh, with a leaf, you know, there is a code word associated with it. Similarly, okay, given a prefix free code for n symbols, you can construct a binary tree with n leaves for which the, uh, this is uh, uh, n or more leaves which has, which uh, which has the same property. Okay. So essentially, if uh, if your code code word is say one 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 zero, then you get to this leaf by traversing right 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 and then left. Okay, that gives you uh, that gives you the position. Similarly, for any any binary string, you sort of get to uh, get to a leaf. Okay, so you traverse right if it's a one, traverse left if it's a zero. And that gives you part of the binary tree. You can fill up the rest of the binary tree if you want. Since it's prefix-free, 
okay each time you will end up with a leaf okay so all these uh, symbols will sit in sit on leaves okay so you can you can check this using small examples in fact i encourage you to do it uh, that will help you understand this this better okay so this is what we want to do so we want to output a prefix free code or a binary tree which corresponds to this which minimizes something like this we saw that once the structure of the binary tree is fixed then we know how to associate these uh, words to the binary tree the two with the smallest frequencies will sit at leaves uh, sorry the uh, uh, yeah the two with the smallest frequencies right will sit at leaves which are at the bottom okay so so here is my tree okay so this is a binary tree and let's say somewhere here it's it's the it's the bottom it need not be sort of balanced it can even be skewed like this okay let's say these two are the bottom most leaves then i know that these uh <coughs> will have the least frequency okay these two the frequencies will be the smallest right because uh, take supposing it were not the case and you know somewhere here you had you had a leaf now the uh, quantity you are minimizing is sigma hi fi right now if this were like closer if the h h of this was smaller h of this was larger okay so let's let's say this is h1 and this is h2 okay h1 is greater than h2 uh, sorry smaller than h2 okay h1 is smaller than h2 this is lower down and that's higher up now you would like to put a smaller frequency here right so that uh, if i had f1 uh, f2 okay supposing uh, it were uh, let's say this way f1 was smaller then i would like f1 this to sit there and this to sit there because then it will be f2 h1 okay plus f1 h2 which is smaller than f1 h1 plus f2 h2 okay you can check that this is smaller than that okay so uh, uh this is what we want which means things which are smaller in frequency must be lower down in the tree things which are larger in frequency should be higher up in the tree which stands to reason because the larger the frequency the smaller should be the code word okay which means it should be higher up in the tree so this much we know so given the shape of the tree we can certainly fill it up with these frequencies that's that's easily done okay but what is the shape of the tree that's the question that we would like to answer yeah so that's what we would like to answer and we would like to use this exchange trick okay so what you would like to do is this okay suppose supposing you are given some tree and you filled it up somehow now suppose there are these two parts from the root okay suppose there are these two parts from the root okay uh <coughs> this is let's say node i that's node j okay there is a tree sitting here call it ti and there is a tree sitting here call it tj okay this is a root okay now uh <clears throat> yeah so what we would like to do is uh, exchange these two subtrees so remember the uh, our exchange trick was we somehow exchange some part of the uh output supposing we had some constructed solution we would like to change twist the solution slightly and see what happens and earlier it was exchanging part of the solution with something which is outside well here since we are constructing trees what we would like to see is suppose you exchange two sub trees what is the result of this action okay what happens with this action what happens to the uh, you know the function we are trying to minimize which is the product of the height times the frequency okay so 
we would like to exchange these two subtrees and see um, what really happens. Okay, so let's do this calculation. Um, so let's say this is at height. So this let's say uh, is height h. Okay, let's say this portion is h prime. Okay, uh, sorry, this is all the way up to the root. So the root to node i is height h. So h is uh, length of path from root to i. Okay, h prime is from root to j. Is root to j. Okay, that's the length of the path from root to j. That's h prime. Uh, <coughs> okay. And we would like to uh, now compute uh, this function. Okay, so see when you exchange these two tree, these two subtrees, the rest of the the rest of the elements remain where they are. So their contribution to this cost remains the same. Okay, we are not changing that at all. So the only thing we need to worry about is the contribution change in the cost because of this exchange. Okay, so let's con let's calculate the old cost because of these two subtrees, the new cost because of these two subtrees and we will see what the difference is. Okay. So here is the old cost. Okay. So, uh, so let me do it for, for Ti. So for every element E in Ti, okay. so I have the frequency times the length of the path from root to that element which is H okay length root to i plus the length of the path inside this subtree okay let me call this le le is the length of the path okay from i to the element e in ti okay so this is the this is the cost old cost for ti and the old cost for tj is uh, sigma let's say fc uh, h prime plus l prime C, okay, and C is in TJ. The similar cost for TJ. H prime is this. L prime C is the is the length of the path from J to the element C. FC is the frequency. Okay, this is the old cost of elements in TI and elements in TJ. Uh, <coughs> similarly, we can write the new cost. Um, let me actually, I guess, I'll have to write this again. Okay, so let me try and write all this in one. So here's the old cost. Sigma um, e belong to Ti. Fe times h plus Le plus sigma c belongs to Tj. Fc times h prime plus L prime. Okay, this is old. The new cost. Well, here I'm just exchanging. Let's go back here. I'm exchanging Ti and Tj. Okay, so this H will remain the same, but here I'll have Tj instead of Ti. Sigma E belongs to Ti. Mm. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So E belongs to Ti. Now Ti has shifted from H to H prime, so it will be F3 Fe times H prime plus Le plus uh, sigma c belongs to tj, uh, <coughs> fc remains the same, it is h plus um, l prime. Okay. So this cost, this length inside the tree, uh, inside the subtree remains fixed, but earlier it was attached to i, okay, that is why I had h prime here. Now it is attached to j, okay. so uh, uh, Earlier it was attached to J, that's why it is H prime. Now it's attached to I, so it is it is H. Right? So this is a new cost. So what is the difference in cost? So I want to compute old minus new. Okay, so when I do old minus new, uh, this F E L E cancels. Okay, in both. Similarly, F C L prime C cancels. Okay, so with Fe, when I subtract H minus H prime is what remains, right? So the o, the co, this is nothing but H minus H prime times sigma Fe 
plus h prime minus h times sigma f c. Okay. So, this is nothing but I am just rewriting this h prime minus h okay, times sigma f c minus sigma f e. Okay, this is uh, c belonging to T j and this is e belonging to T i. Okay. So, let us go back one slide h prime I will assume is greater than h. Okay. I have done a shift of this if h prime is greater than h what is the result. Okay. So, if h prime is greater than h then this quantity is positive. Okay, right. So, if this quantity is negative then we have achieved something which is good the cost has decreased right uh, I mean the cost has increased. So, uh, yeah I am sorry. So, this is old minus new right. If old minus new is is greater than 0 okay, that means the old cost is greater than the new cost we have decreased the cost right. So, which is what we want. So, when is this this fellow is greater than 0. So, if this fellow is greater than 0 then we are in good shape. Okay. If this fellow is greater than 0 then we have achieved something. Okay. So, which means uh, so let me just write this down. So, let us conclude. Uh, so, if uh, so here is here is i and T i and somewhere here is j and T j. Okay. If sigma f c c belongs to uh, T j is greater okay, and sigma f e e belong to uh, T i okay, c belongs to T j e belongs to T i. If this is true then exchanging leads to smaller cost. Okay, so, we have two subtrees one is this this is T i that is T i okay, that fellow is T j. If the sum of the frequencies of the elements in T j is greater than the sum of the frequencies of elements in T i then if I exchange I get a smaller cost. Okay. Remember it is not the amp, it is just this when I look at a subtree I need to look at only the sum of the frequencies inside that is what this these, these two things say. Okay. Only the sum of the frequencies nothing to do with the length inside the tree etcetera. I do not care what this tree looks like as long as the sum of the frequencies of elements inside this subtree okay, is greater than this I should move it up. That is what that is what the exchange trick tells us and our algorithm in fact will use this fact. Okay. So, when I look at a subtree the quantity that I am going to keep looking at is the sum of the frequencies of elements in the subtree not the average length or anything of that kind. Okay. So, this this will be our uh, this will be the mantra that we will follow during the course of this algorithm. Okay, so, okay, now what? Uh, so, we will follow we would like to follow a greedy approach which is we would like to build these subtrees one by one okay, slowly. Uh, initially each element will be a subtree of its own. Okay. So, I am going to build these subtrees bottom up slow increase the size of uh, the subtrees that I build slowly. Okay. Initially each element will be a subtree of its own. Okay, this is the this is the bottom bottom thing, and I know the first step, right? So if I have let's say uh, if I have these elements, let's say this has frequency f1, f2, fn minus one, and fn. Okay, suppose these are the frequencies, and uh, let's say they are in 
decreasing order. Okay, so f1 is greater than or equal to f2, and so on. Okay, two of the smallest ones are fn minus one and fn. Okay, then I know part of the subtree. I know that my next step, I can have f1, f2, and so on. I can join the last two. This will be a subtree. I know, right? So this is fn minus one. And this is F n. Okay. The question is what next? Okay, now the crucial trick is rather than treat them as leaves, I treat all of them as subtrees. This is one subtree, this is another subtree. Well, a leaf is a subtree, right? This is a subtree, that's a subtree, this is a subtree. Now, which are the two two subtrees that I want to be at the bottom? Okay, remember the previous exchange thing. At the bottom, I want the subtree with Whose sum, whose frequency, some of the frequencies of the uh, of the uh, nodes inside it must be the smallest, right? So I now look at these frequencies. I have f1, f2, and so on. So this is fn minus two. Now this I treat as one subtree, and it is fn minus one plus fn. So this is my new f prime. Let's say n minus one. Okay, these frequencies remain the same. Now this I look upon as a subtree with this frequency. Among these, I choose two of the smallest. Okay, I choose two of the smallest, and I put a new node and join them together. And this is my this is my algorithm. So I just keep doing this as I go up. Okay, so my generic step of the algorithm is this. I have subtrees. Okay, so Treat initially treat each element as a subtree. Okay. Uh, okay. Each element is treated as a subtree, and as I go along, I'll have many subtrees. Okay. So, so the intermediate stage is this. I have uh, subtrees. Let's say t1, t2, so on up to tk. Okay. Now. I associate a weight to each of them, which is just the sum of the frequencies of the elements inside each. Okay, so let's say uh, mm, f1 prime, f2 prime, so on, fk prime. So fi prime is the sum of the frequencies of elements in i okay or symbols or words okay so you just sum up all the frequencies and that's that's my that's a phi prime okay now i pick two of the minimum pick two uh, two of minimum f prime okay and join them together and make a new subtree okay for instance if fk prime and fk minus 1 prime were the smallest ones then i would take a uh, tk minus 1 and tk okay and join them together the others remain as they are tk minus 2 and so on okay this is if Tk and Fk prime was the smallest, let's say, and Fk minus one prime was the next smallest. Okay, then my in that iteration, I take this as input and I create this. So the number of trees has decreased by one. Okay, I have just merged these two subtrees to get this. The new frequency of this will be just the sum of the frequencies of these two things. Okay, these will remain. This will remain as F1 prime and so on. Because here you have just uh, the two elements, the elements of these two just get union. So this is a generic step, and I put this into a loop, and uh, this is my algorithm. You can see that the algorithm terminates. Okay, it's easy to see because initially I start with each leaf, each uh, element as a subtree. Okay, so these will be the leaves, and uh, there are n of them. Each time the number of subtrees decreases by one. So finally, I will just have one subtree.
okay this will be my binary tree this will be a the binary tree that i want and this will give me the um, the prefix free code that i'm looking for so why does this why does this algorithm work okay so let's let's write a proof of correctness and again it will we'll just uh, invoke the same exchange principle that we've done to to write a proof okay so here is a proof okay so what we would like to argue is that um, at each stage see at each stage you have uh, you have these subtrees t1 3 2 t2 up to tk will op, will the proof statement that we would like is that at each stage there is an optimum okay there is an optimum tree which has the subtrees that the algorithm constructs as subtrees okay so what does this mean so uh, if the algorithm for instance here if the alg the algorithm had subtrees t1 t2 up to tk there must be an optimum tree which has these as subtrees you don't know how these are connected but the optimum must have these as sub sub subtrees there must be some optimum tree with these as subtrees okay now this statement is if we prove this statement then we are we are done because once the algorithm terminates we just have one tree right and we've just said that an optimum must have this as a subtree which means the optimum must be this tree so if this statement is true for all stages of the algorithm it should be true when the algorithm terminates in which case we have uh, we have what we want okay so why is this why is this true so so again the proof you can write this proof uh, by induction on on this stage on these stages right the so proof so uh, you would like to prove this okay maybe maybe i should shift this here so proof by induction on stages okay the first stage at the beginning so the base case well it's true because what you have as subtrees are just the leaves and these should be leaves even in an optimum tree right the base case you have n elements which are which are not connected to anything and this is true even in the optimum optimum case right so uh, so the base case is 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 okay okay so the base case is okay so what is what about the inductive step well what what happened in the inductive step so here is the inductive step well you started out with trees let's say t1 up to tk okay t1 to tk and you ended up with t1 up to tk minus 2 2 two of them let's say the last two you join okay this is tk minus 1 and tk this is what the algorithm did you know by induction that there is an optimum which had these as subtrees right there is an optimum tree which had these as subtrees so let's look at this optimum so by the inductive hypothesis there is an optimum tree with t1 up to tk as subtrees okay now we would like to argue that there is an optimum which has all these as subtrees right uh now why is that true well the reason is this let's look at this optimum tree there is an optimum tree let's say uh call it t okay let's look at t now among these so how does it look like so it is something like this then there is a subtree and maybe you know 
goes as a subtree, somewhere down there is a subtree, okay. Then maybe it branches out like this, maybe there is a subtree here, and so on. So, there are these subtrees T1, T2 up to Tk sitting here, right. So, look at the lowest two subtrees, okay. Look at the lowest subtree. I claim that I can put Tk here. The lowest subtree must contain Tk. Now, why is that so? Supposing it is not, okay. Supposing something else sits here, what I do is some Ti, okay. What I do is exchange, supposing let us say Tk were here and uh, you know Ti were here. Then I exchange Ti and Tk, okay. I do this subtree exchange and by the previous argument that we did, we saw that the cost decreased, right. The, when we did the exchange trick and we did the calculation, we saw that the cost actually decreased. So, uh, this, this should not be possible in which means in the optimum, I should always have t, Tk sitting at the bottom, right. Similarly, Tk minus 1 must also be sitting at the bottom which, one, which means the height must be uh, again maximum. So, what I can do is take the bottom two nodes, okay, take the bottom two nodes and I can always exchange whatever sits here, I can exchange it with this should be Tk, okay, and this as Tk minus 1. Remember that these frequencies were the smallest, Tk was the smallest and this was the second smallest. So, I can always exchange any of those trees with these, with these two, these are the bottom most and I will always get cost which is less. So, I can, I can assume that there is an optimum solution with Tk and Tk minus 1 at the bottom. Right. Well, now I am done because this structure I just pull out from here, okay. This is Tk, that is Tk minus 1 and here is the other node. So, this structure I have just pulled out from here, good. So, there is an optimum tree which has T1, Tk minus 1 and, and this as, uh, as subtrees and we are, we are actually done. So, this finishes the proof that uh, uh, it finishes the proof that this algorithm is optimal. So, each time you look at, you merge two trees which have the least weight, okay, the minimum weight subtree and the second minimum and you create a new tree by merging these two into a binary tree, okay. So, that is, that is the algorithm and it works. Uh, this was done by Huffman and it is called, this uh, coding is called Huffman coding, okay. So, let us just summarize. Uh, our discussion of greedy algorithms. Well, the main thing was we build the solution output solution piece by piece. Each time we, we somehow get the right piece to imagine it is a jigsaw and you are you know pulling out pieces to pieces to fit and each time you put the right piece in place, okay. That is the, that is the crucial thing. To help us, we used uh, what was called an exchange trick, okay. Essentially, uh, start with any solution and change a solution to obtain a better one. Okay, this is just something that you do to figure out what your algorithm should be doing, right. Uh, this is not what exactly the algorithm does. This is just to help you figure out what the algorithm does, which is you start with any solution. Now, you sort of tweak the solution a bit and see what happens. And typically, it is exchanging part of the solution for something else, okay. You take something out of the solution, put something in, you do a bit of an exchange, then you see what happens to the profit or the you know, objective function if it increases, okay, if it gets better, then then you are, then that somehow tells you, it gives you a hint as to what to, how to proceed, okay. Uh, so, this, this is about greedy algorithms. I would recommend that you study matroids, okay, theory of matroids and uh, linear programming, especially the, the so-called primal dual method, which uh, is available on uh, available in most textbooks on linear programming and these two may give you a better sort of feeling 
for greedy algorithms and how you know these strategies work good luck